Low elo players arguably have the most problems in Valorant. Aside from lacking good base mechanics, players will also have pretty poor game sense and decision making. Hi guys, this is Egwick, and in this video I'm going to tackle common mistakes in low elo and how to fix them. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel, it's free and you can always unsubscribe at any time. Enjoy! Now I'm going to leave out the problems of base mechanics as these are talked about in every other low elo guide. Crosshair placement, peaking, movement and positioning, these are all topics that I've made guides about in the past, so this time I want to cover problems that are more focused on game sense. The first problem is the lack of information gathering. Information is crucial in Valorant. The problem in lower ranks, especially on defender side, is that people are too afraid to even try to gather information. You need to be jiggle peeking, jump peeking, or using utility to find out where the enemy team is. You don't need to commit to a fight. More often than not, players will stay in corners without offering any information and then get surprised when an enemy has snuck up on them from some unknown location. For example, a common mistake is not watching the A main cross on split. Cross is a very important area on the map because it allows the team to push into heaven and makes it hard for defenders to retake, especially if they're coming from B. Usually, I'll see someone smoke off cross, which is a big no-no. Not only does it allow the enemy team to safely cross over, but it also gives them one less angle to deal with. The better play would be to either use a one-way smoke or jiggle peek it so that you get information while remaining relatively safe. But more importantly, if you don't have info on who crossed, you might screw over your teammates like what happened here. I'm rotating. There's two in a heaven, they just walk up for free. What are you doing, Omen? One with Elbow screens, side. What, what are my teammates doing? This segues into the next mistake of bad rotations and over rotating. Unless you've unanimously agreed that you'll play for retake on a certain site, you shouldn't be rotating the whole team over when you've only spotted one player. What? What the f At the very least, you should leave one player in a crucial spot to both gather info and try to delay the push. Obviously, sentinels are great at this role, which is why they're usually the anchor and solo player on many maps. Let's use the split example again. Say that you've seen one enemy in mid and two enemies in B main or garage. You can have the team rotate over in case there's a fast push, but I'd suggest leaving one player behind in A. He can either play ramp or screens just to get info and buy time. If your solo A player had rotated over to B, then the enemy team could have potentially already taken control of A site for free. Remember, as defenders, you want to make it as hard as possible for enemies to occupy parts of the map. Next is problems with aggression. Players are too passive or too aggressive and at the wrong times. Being aggressive on defense can work, but you need to be thoughtful about it. Conversely, Playing passive is something you can opt to do on certain scenarios on offense. Now let me explain. On attack, you can hold an angle if the defending team has been pushing round after round and try to get a pick before committing to a site. However, playing passively on attack is not recommended as you're also running down time, which is good for the defenders. You want to be as proactive as possible. In a post-plant situation, I find that low elo players love to hunt for kills and eventually throw the round. After planting, you don't need to be aggressive all the time, but it's important that you cover the angles where enemies can retake from. As a side note, you need to learn the proper bomb plants. When planting, you need to figure out the area that you're going to be defending the bomb from. For example, on Haven Seaside, there are two ways to plant the bomb. One is planted for long, which is the common plant, and two, it's planted for CT, which you're usually doing if it's a fast rotate. These two locations will have different effects on how post-plant will play out. 
If it's planted for long, then play C long. And if it's planted for CT, then play CT. Because then, you can play passively and buy time for the bomb to explode. This is a simplified example, but I just wanted to put it out there because bad bomb plants can lead to unnecessary aggression and lost rounds. On defense, aggression works every now and then, but pay attention to how the enemy team plays and take a calculated risk. Next is abusing effective range. Effective range is a concept that each weapon has a certain distance where it's most effective. Shotguns up close and snipers for longer distances. Lower elo players don't abuse the effective range of their weapon and peak angles that are not beneficial to them. The most common offender is players trying to kill someone in tiles from short with a specter when they're up against a vandal. You want fights to be as unfair as possible in your favor. However, there are going to be situations where you can't abuse the effective range of your gun, but we want to minimize those situations as much as possible. This is especially true on eco rounds for eco frags. If you've watched my montages, you'll see that I highlight eco frags because they're essentially free kills when you have a much better gun. And yes, you should be buying on round 2 if you win round 1. Next are bad smokes and setups. While bad smokes and setups might work in low elo, they're not a good habit to have. The point of smokes is to block vision so that you have fewer angles to worry about. However, you also need to factor in whether an enemy can use your smoke to their advantage, which often implies that they can play in your smoke. For example, a bad smoke on Haven Seasight is this one. Generally, you'd want to have full control of sight before planting the bomb, but this smoke splits the sight into two, where enemies can safely enter by using your smoke as cover. Better smokes for Haven Seasight would be Garage and CT, because that way, you can clear sight and it blocks vision from those areas. Remember, your smokes are supposed to make it easier to have full sight control, so smoking in sight may or may not work for you depending on a myriad of factors. So it's a lot safer to use default smokes instead. Next is trading and crossfires. In lower elos, a lot of players don't properly trade off a peak. Baiting is also a big problem. Now, there isn't much you can do if your teammate decides to constantly bait you. However, I've found that telling them to peek off your contact is a great way to communicate what you want them to do. If you're the baiter, please don't bait your teammates, and when someone peeks, please peek together with them. Aside from that, you also need to learn true crossfires. A true crossfire is when the enemy will appear on both player screens at the same time. From experience, it's hard to set up crossfires in low elo because players sometimes refuse to play together, opting for aggression or other things. But if you do set up a true crossfire, you're guaranteed a trade at the very least. Lastly, callout should be short and informative. The only information you should be giving is how much you've hit them for, where they were last seen, and if something is mollied or walled off. I find that backseat gamers are rampant in low elo. It doesn't help the person playing when you're screaming orders at them. Oh, and also, if you're dead, ping the bomb for your teammates so they can spray through smoke. Okay, so that's it for this video. If I missed any low elo mistakes, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this vid, please consider subscribing to the channel. This is Egwick, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.